So far I've played through Dredge quite a few times, and each time I've tried to challenge myself even more as you can see from all my challenge videos. In all these attempts, I have discovered many things that are really helpful or just very exciting. In this video, I will share all of that with you. So sit back and see how much crazy stuff you missed about Dredge. You can actually beat the game without buying any fishing rods. Yes, you heard right. Although each area in the game has different types of fish that require specific fishing rods, there's still a way to beat the game without buying a single one of them. And what's even more amazing, you can even beat the game without researching anything at all. Is that even possible? Well, it's quite complicated, but there's a way to get everything you need through side missions and hidden loot. For example, quite early in the game, you need a fishing rod with which you can fish in shallow water. You can normally buy this rod for a small amount of money in the shipyard, but because that's not possible, I had to find another way. If you put 5 curved fish in the stone slab behind Great Marrow, you get the sinews bindle in return, an equipment piece with the ability to catch in shallow waters. Also, I know that there's an old engine in the shipwreck next to an island nearby, so I don't need to research other engines. With this method and a lot of planning, it is actually possible to beat the game without buying any fishing rods. And in this challenge, I even tried to do it without buying any equipment at all. Check it out if you're interested in whether I made it or not. Holding down haste is not efficient. If you've ever seen a speedrun of Dredge, you may have noticed it. Normally, you simply hold down the ability button until the haste bar is almost full and then let it cool down again. But this is not the most efficient way and in my opinion is way too annoying. Instead of having to watch out permanently so that you don't destroy your engine, there is also a better way. It is much easier and more efficient if you press the haste button at short intervals. Once you've found your rhythm, you can cover long distances without having to watch the haste bar every 2 seconds and you will even arrive faster. Get to about the middle of the haste bar and keep your rhythm and this way you don't have to worry about destroying your engine all the time. There is an easy way to defeat the Mindsuckers. As you may know, the Mindsuckers appear every time you enter the Twisted Strands. They stick their heads out of the water and chase you. If your boat is fast enough, you can usually just speed away. But this doesn't always work and is dangerous as the Twisted Strands has very narrow path and many other hazards. There is a much easier way. As soon as you see a Mindsucker appear, stop. If he hasn't seen you yet, he won't spot you because he detects the boat by movement. Just wait a while and he will dive down again. But be careful, because as soon as he has you in his gaze, this doesn't work anymore. You will just increase your panic immensely and make other things attack you. If you have already played a lot of dredge, you might know this, but I and many others discovered this very late. There is actually a dog hidden in a hut on the other side of Stellar Basin. When you approach it, it is scared away, but there is the possibility to play with it, and if you do that enough, you gain its trust so that it wants to accompany you on your journey. If you take the dog with you, you can either just leave him on your boat and enjoy the game together with him, or drop him off at the explorer nearby. She will be very happy and will take care of the dog nicely from then on. Besides, you get a small reward in return. Any spell you cast can kill you. In the course of the game, you unlock different abilities at the collector. These are really very useful, but also have a big disadvantage. You may have already noticed it with the big spells like Manifest and Atrophy, but every spell you use increases your panic. And that's the point, because not only these abilities increase your panic. Even Banish, which is supposed to protect you, increases your panic quite a bit, which actually makes it worse in the long run. Even haste, which you normally use without thinking much about it, always increases your panic. This is especially dangerous because it's so slow that you hardly notice it, and all of a sudden your panic is so high that you are attacked by monsters. The order in which you complete the game is not important. It is actually possible to collect the relic in the last area first and get the relic in the first area last, as I've done in this challenge. This is actually quite useful because it unlocks skills earlier. For example, in the Gale Cliffs lives a monster that inevitably attacks whenever you go into the cliffs. An easy way around this is to first complete the harmless Stellar Basin. This unlocks the Banish ability and you can use it against the monster in the Gale Cliffs to get the relic unharmed. The Phantom Shark is a very fast sea monster that appears out of nowhere when you have high panic and causes great damage to the boat. It will be on the player almost as soon as it appears. However, what most players don't know is that there is a pretty good way to defend against them. As soon as you see a phantom shark, you have to stop and point your boat sideways. When the monster is relatively close in front of you, you need to quickly drive sideways and use haze. With this method, the monster will not hit you and will disappear. This has helped me through many rough situations. When you see sparkling over a fishing spot, it is always worth to take a look. This means that in this fishing spot live either valuable mutant or record fish. When you start to fish there, occasionally a golden segment will appear on the wheel in addition to the green ones. If you are able to time your click correctly to land on this segment, you will catch a trophy fish with an extra large size and value. This is a pretty convenient way to make a good amount of money. 
Speaking of money, throughout my playing days I've noticed that not every fish is the same, even if they look the same. Fish can vary in size and condition. Larger fish are more valuable, and a fish that is more than 85% of the maximum size will be worth an additional 25%. Also you have to sell fish as fast as possible, because they have a condition which slowly degrades every 12 hours. This condition starts as fresh, but slowly deteriorates to stale, then rotting and finally becomes worthless rot taking up one inventory slot. As you can see, the value drops by a lot, so be careful that you don't lose all your money. The kraken that lives in the stellar basin attacks you as soon as you enter the deep center. But there's actually one thing that helps you prevent these attacks. When you go around the basin, you will see a light blue color in the water. This means that the kraken hasn't seen you yet, but as soon as the water and the surroundings turn red, it means that the kraken knows that you are there and will attack you shortly after. So always pay attention to the color of the water to avoid attacks. Often, you need certain material to improve the boat, but cannot find it anywhere. You have already emptied all the spots and do not know where something is still available. But there is an easy way to get infinite resources. Just drive to the next port, save the game, go back to the main menu and when you come back in, the spots are full again. The next thing on the list is actually pretty funny. The Night Angler is a unique sea monster that mimics the silhouettes of boats and ships sailing through the thick fog at night giving them the name Ghost Ships. If you do see one at night, you can try blasting your foghorn and they can reply with their foghorn, unlocking the achievement from the fog. I also realized they mimic the exact same sound as you do with the foghorn and I couldn't stop myself from playing around with it. That is art, baby. That's art. Before I address the last and possibly most significant point, I have a small but important request for you. If you enjoyed the video so far, subscribe now to join the league of extraordinary viewers. We are here to save you from boredom, one video at a time. The equipment you buy is often not the best. Instead of wasting hours looking for research parts and collecting money, in many cases there is an easier and better way. As I mentioned before, there are quests all over the map that give you different loot. Some of it is really useless, but there is also loot that is significantly better than the equivalent you can buy in the store. I won't list all the things, but at least I mentioned the two items that are better by far. The first is the flame of the sky, a headlamp that uses 30% less space than the best light in the store, but still has significantly more lumens. It can be found in the ancient lighthouse in Devil's Spine, and if you want to retrieve it, you will need to complete the stone tablet's pursuit. It can be combined with two cloudy lenses for a total lumen of 5000. The next, much more useful item is the encrusted talisman. It can be found in a shrine in Devil's Spine and has a basic fishing speed buff of 300%. Equipped with the best fishing rods, you can reach a maximum fishing speed of 750%. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and check out my channel for some more quality dredge content.